Good morning and welcome to Encompass Live. I'm Emily Nimsikant, filling in for your regular host, Krista Burns. Encompass Live is the Nebraska Library Commission's weekly online event. It covers NLC activities as well as other library topics presented by Library Commission staff and guests. The free one-hour sessions are offered every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time and include a mixture of presentations, interviews, book reviews, web tours, mini training sessions, and question and answer sessions. Here with me today I have Rod Wagner and Mary Jo Ryan, and at this point I'm going to turn it over to Rod to introduce our guest today. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're very pleased this morning to have with us uh, Sally Reed, Executive Director of ALTAF, the Association of Library Trustees, Advocates, Friends, and Foundation, Foundations, excuse me, a division of the American Library Association. Uh, we asked uh, Sally some time ago if she would be willing to uh, uh, join us for the webinar this morning uh, to uh, tell us uh, more about uh, ALTAF, uh, a newly reorganized division of the American Library Association. Uh, there's a great story behind uh, uh, this new division and how it uh, came about through uh, a uh, combination of the former Friends of Libraries USA and the uh, prior uh, division of ALA that worked with uh, uh, library trustees and advocates. Uh, but we're eager to hear from Sally this morning to tell us about her work and her work through the uh, American Library Association, uh, some ideas that she has for uh, Nebraskans and how we can participate and benefit from the uh, uh, various programs and services of ALTAF. So with that, I'm going to stop and I'm going to ask uh, Sally to uh, uh, jump in and uh, offer her ideas to us. Welcome, Sally. Good morning. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Rod. Um, before I get started, I have to, um, I wish this was a visual webinar so that we could all watch Rod blush. But um, I do want to say that I think you have. <laughs> uh, he's, yeah, see his blush uh, in your minds. Anyway, I just want to say that you all are very lucky to have Rod and his staff. They are really tremendous. I work with a lot of state library agencies across the country, and I think that you have one of the very best. Um, I think that the fact that Rod has made available all the resources of Palooza, now all tapped to all of you, is very far-sighted because as I go through the slides today, I want to show you everything that we can do for you as librarians, but also for friends and trustees. I'm really excited about it. And um, I want to tell you a little bit more of the background about why we came together because I think the story sort of informs our future and what we're all about. And that is that um, Alt ALTA, the Association of Library Trustees and Advocates, was a division of the American Library Association and it has been faltering for many, many years. Interestingly, it's the second oldest division of the American Library Association, which I... It, I think it was founded in 1890, and so right away I think that tells you that the American Library Association has always seen citizen um, um, input to libraries as very, very important. But over the past couple of decades, Alta had been faltering, and I think because they had not really mastered the ability of delivering remote services, most of the services that they offered to trustees were to trustees who attended um, national conferences. And as you all know, um, that is necessarily a very few amount of trustees. Meanwhile, Felusa had... Um, thanks to my predecessor, Sandy Dolnick, had right away understood that friends groups were not going to be traveling to national conferences, but had the same needs as um, any other group of library supporters to share best practices, to receive resources, to help them do what they do even better. So we were um, actually doing quite well, and Alta not so much. And um, the executive director of ALA, Keith Fields, sort of noticed this and was concerned about the future of Alta, and meanwhile seeing Pelusa doing quite well with citizen supporters of libraries. So he approached me and asked me what I thought about combining the two organizations. And I think it was sort of the perfect timing for that because this happened really right as our economy was beginning to tumble. And 
I believe strongly that citizen supporters of libraries are the ones who are going to save libraries. I, I really believe that one of the things that we need to do is a much better job of making the case for libraries, and I don't think librarians are the ones that are going to be um, able to send that message as strongly as those who use and support libraries. So to me, uniting those voices make complete sense. And um, with, um, within a year or year and a half, that um, became a reality. So with that, I think the focus of ALTAF in, is sort of um, three-pronged. At first is to, to unite the voices of citizens for libraries and teach citizens how they can be best advocates and promoters of libraries at the local, state, and national level. The second is to provide trustees with really the materials that they need and the resources they need to be good trustees and to be able to understand their roles and to understand how they can make a difference. And then the third is what the Falusa mission was all about, and that is to work with friends and um, help them raise more money, be better advocates, yeah, provide a network for best practices, that sort of thing. So here we are all together, and um, I'm, I'm really excited about the future for libraries when we connect those citizen voices. I'm hoping that we will model at the uh, national level uh, a new uniting of trustees and friends at the state and local levels as well, because I think um, that our future sort of depends on they're coming together and being strong advocates. Um, as we move along through these slides that I have, I want to let you know that I'm um, very comfortable with being interrupted. So um, if you have questions, just raise your hand virtually, and we will stop and take any kind of questions you have. Don't worry about waiting till the end unless you feel more comfortable doing that. But I'm, I'm totally comfortable with being interrupted. So let's go to the next slide. Um, the reason that I think it is so important for you all to belong and to make sure your friends belong to um, ALTAF, which they actually do, is because we have so much to offer. We really have an incredible library of resources for friends, trustees, and librarians. And I just wanted to go over some of these again. And if, um, if you're librarians out there in the audience, please make sure that your friends understand that there's a lot of good stuff that they can use to help them do better. Um, we always are adding new toolkits to our friends and um, trustee zone. Um, some of the ones, one of the brand, the newest one is pricing books for online sales, and I know that more and more friends groups are doing this. So this toolkit will um, help uh, friends understand what books might have better value online and how to determine what price that they should put on them. I've been monitoring the listserv um, out there, and I know that a lot of library friends groups, small and large, are now realizing fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars a year from online sales. So it's really a lucrative um, way to go, and we can help with that toolkit, help friends get started. We also have uh, a toolkit on the actual mechanics of selling books online. And here's one you librarians out there I think would really appreciate, a memorandum of understanding. Um, if you are having trouble with your friends groups, and, and this does happen from time to time, where the friends are sort of um, not clear on their role as fundraisers and not decision makers, I think sometimes when friends step over that role, it creates um, a a wedge between the friends and the director, and I know directors out there who say they will never um, nurture a friends group again because they've had such problems with friends sort of making the decisions, well, we'll fund, you know, we want to buy this, or we want to buy that, or we're not going to support your, you know, we don't like the direction the library's going, so we're not going to give you any money. One of the best things that you can do, especially if you're starting up a new friends group or you're sort of going through the um, work of revitalizing a friends group is to set up a memorandum of understanding about what the library will do to support the friends and what the friends will do to support the library and making it really clear right from the beginning about the 
uh, difference of the roles so that in the future if there's some problems and you all know that sometimes it can be just one person who changes the dynamics of everything and causes a lot of problems and it's really nice if you can pull out an objective document that was done ahead of time that says this is your role and this is my role and it's really important that we keep them separate and here's our agreement that we've always had to do that. Um, so we have that sample for you. We do have a toolkit on how to revitalize your friends and I know in these hard times many, many libraries are looking to sort of um, beef up their friends and the friends groups are as well, trying to help um, friends create more active members out there and not just the checkbook members and we, we do have a toolkit on how to do that. Um, you know our newsletter uh, the former news update from Felusa is just absolutely chock full with great ideas from across the country. There is no need for your friends groups to reinvent the wheel. So you can go back into that uh, archive and look at news updates and find ideas for fundraising or membership promotion or library promotion or whatever it is that you're trying to do with your friends. This is a wonderful resource. And then we're really exceptionally proud of our new newsletter. I hope all of you have had a chance to see it. It's called The Voice for America's Libraries, or The Voice for short. And it is a newsletter that combines the um, information for both friends and trustees. It's 24 pages long, and it's really, I think, an outstanding newsletter um, sharing best practices and helping friends and trustees understand um, ways in which they can be better at the work that they do on behalf of their libraries. And of course, it's always fun to have quotes on libraries and books, and so we have a huge database um, on what we call notable quotables. So lots and lots of good stuff out there. And this is just a sampling. I mean, we have much more than this. So we'll look at the next slide. This is um, uh, the cover of The Voice. I wanted you to see it um, so that you would recognize it when it comes across your desk. It's, um, I think, really a great um, newsletter, and especially for librarians, too, to see what's going on out there um, in the world among friends and trustees so that, some, so that you can encourage your own support groups to sort of maximize their efforts and make sure that they're really helping you promote the library and be strong advocates for the library. Next slide. Um, this is something that we were originally selling. We feel like we've reached um, that, that uh, plateau with it, and we thought, why not just put it in the friends zone and make it available to everybody who belongs to Altaf. And I think that this is a really great little tool for you all to raise money within your own community. I know a lot of times libraries and friends groups try to raise, you know, they go to the big guys. They want to go to Procter and Gamble or Johnson and Johnson and get big grants. But the truth is there's usually a lot of money within your own community. And so this is this getting grants is geared toward helping you develop a case statement, develop a great cover letter, um, put together a proposal, and it even suggests different um, civic groups and organizations that are typically very generous to community organizations such as the library or such as friends. So be sure to check that out. Uh, next slide. This, to me, when I first took this job, this was my best education right here, and that is um, the listserv. Now, you'll see it says Felusa, and that is because we are still working with ALA to move our um, materials and services over to them. We have had some little glitches, not only with meshing softwares, but also um, ALA did not have the ability to password protect um, a second level. So if you had an ALA password, you could get into everything. And Felusa didn't want to make everything free. We want certain things to be available only to our members. So while we're in this interim of getting everything together, you can still join the listserv at www.felusa.org. And we're working out a way to move everybody en masse over when the time comes so that you won't have to re-up. And I'm not sure that's going to be possible, but we're looking at it. But as I said, this was my best learning tool. I think the smartest people on the face of the earth are on this listserv. There are people that can tell you the 
the most minute detail about filing a nonprofit tax return, for example, there are people who have been there, done that, and they are so generous with their advice and their knowledge. It's just an education in itself. So if your friends are not on this listserv, I would highly encourage them to go on. If you ever have a question like, should the library, this is one that comes up very often, should the library staff be spending time and money for the friends? And, you know, you can go online and people say, well, how much time and money, and what's the return you're getting back? And, of course, the ALTAF answer to that question is absolutely. We think it's a development issue. We think that staff should be spending time and effort with their friends. Um, but if their friends aren't returning with, um, with the big bucks or even significant bucks, you have to weigh that if you're spending, you know, uh, $5,000 of staff time and effort and copies and et cetera a year and the friends are only giving you back 5000 you might have to say, well, is their visit helping the library become more visible and is still that worth it even though it's a wash? Um, if they're not returning anything, and trust me, there are some friends groups out there that like to hoard their cash. That's another issue and we can certainly talk about that. Um, but if they're not, then you have to assess whether it's worth it. I hear laughter. <laughs> <laughs> We do not recommend that friends groups hoard their cash. We do, in fact, have a tip sheet on, uh, on uh, giving to the library, and we recommend that the friends try to empty their coffers almost to zero every year. Um, we think it's there are, people give to the friends because they believe the friends are turning around and giving it to the library, not letting it sit in the bank account, and these days you can't even claim you're getting any interest on it. So um, we don't really believe in rainy day funds unless the library concurs and there's some big um, uh, capital project on the horizon that the friends are specifically saving for with the agreement of the library director. Otherwise, we like them to spend their money. But that's, that's sort of an aside. But you will find such great advice, even as a library director, we have a lot of library directors on the listserv who have those kinds of questions, you know, and the friends will come back and boy, you will learn a lot, just a lot. I, I really think this is the best listserv going. So um, next slide. One of the things that um, you will get out of um, your membership with Altaf is really significant discounts on the publications that we develop. Um, if you haven't seen even more great ideas, it's really wonderful. And I can say that without boasting because all it is is a compilation of all of your best ideas. We just went out there into um, the friends world and asked for contributions to this book. And again, the generosity of friends. We have well over a hundred really great practices in the area of membership building, fundraising, starting a friends group, revitalizing a friends group, ha um, how do you structure a friends group so that it continually attracts new members, all kinds of wonderful uh, great ideas that came from friends groups across the country. If you buy this from Neil Schumann, you're going to pay $65. If you buy it with your Altaf membership, it's 40 So a really positive um, uh, uh, resource at a really good price, I think. So that's just one of the things you get with your membership. We have lots of discounts on other things. I'll uh, look at the next slide. Here's an, just another um, example. We publish this with Neil Schumann, and we have their permission to sell to our members only for 40. They're selling the book for, I think, actually 35, and they're selling the book for 55. So as an Altaf member, you can order through us versus ordering through Neil Schumann and get that really good discount. Um, and while we're on the subject of trustees, one of the things that Altaf will be doing starting in the fall is creating a certification, national certification program for trustees. And I use that word certify with a small c. It's not going to be anything official except they'll get um, national rec uh, recognition for having gone through the program so they'll be a best practices trustee or something. We haven't really come up with a name. And it's going to be a, a set of courses, I think six, that will help them understand very well their roles and how to um, be better at their role. So, and it'll teach them about some of the issues that they need to address, like intellectual freedom and what to do when the censor comes and that sort of thing, how to develop policies. And I think really importantly for this audience of primarily librarians, to help them understand the difference between governance and management um, so that they can be great 
supporters and partners with their librarian, but not step over that line into sort of directing how the librarian should manage the library and manage the resources. Because again, that can cause, as, as some of you probably know firsthand, that can cause some very dysfunctional relationships. So we'll be talking about that over the course of this um, certification program. So you'll want to um, watch out for that for your trustees because again, all TAF members will get a significant discount over those who are not. Sally, so we next. have a question coming in if you don't mind taking a little break. Um, someone typed it in in the text chat. Um, do you have resources for non-governing advisory boards? Um, yes, in fact, we do have tip sheets for non-governing advisory boards, and in fact, this Complete Library Trustee Handbook is also going to address that. Once you get past the, um, the piece of the, li the trustees, whether they hire and fire the librarian, which gives them some pretty powerful authority over the library and some different uh, fiduciary and legal responsibilities than advisory boards have. Once you get past that, a lot of what advisory boards do are the same as what governing boards do. For example, how do you hold an effective meeting? How do you engage in the planning process? How do you promote the library? How do you become effective advocates for the library? How do you present a budget that is powerful to your uh, local funders. So those sorts of things that advisory boards should and usually are engaged in are the same as what the governing boards are doing. So, so we do re make those recommend, uh, we do recognize those differences in our materials and then once we're past those sort of legal uh, differences and uh, the authority differences, we move into the pieces that really make a board effective. I hope that answers the question. Looks like it. Yep, we got a thing. So, looks like it answered okay. the question. All right, then let's go to the next slide. Whoops, I think we went past um, one. Uh -huh. There we go. Now this says the book lover's calendar for 2008, but actually we are ready for the 2010. And those of you who've done it before know that um, the supplies at this time of year are really going fast. But um, I just want to let you know, and if not for this year, for next year, that we always partner with um, the publishers of the book lover's calendar. We can sell them to you for two fifty plus. 5% shipping, and they retail for $13. So it's been a fabulous fundraiser for friends. And really, these are just terrific if you haven't actually seen the Book Lover's Calendar. It's a page-a-day calendar, and it has a book recommendation um, and a little book summary on every single page. So this is a wonderful thing for your friends to do to raise money for the library. And um, that's the information for that is available in the friend zone. Still, as I mentioned, um, we're still at www.felusa.org on um, the friend zone. Now, all the things that are not in the friend zone are over at ALA, so I'll talk about that in a minute. But just wanted to let you know that this is another benefit of your membership with ALTAF, and it's really um, one that has been uh, loved by uh, friends across the country. So now we'll go to the next slide. And so, you know, why in, why does all of this matter? And I, I think you all know, and maybe know better now than ever before, that um, friends' engagement is so incredibly important to libraries. And, you know, we know about friends from fundraising, and that is, you know, so important these days for libraries. And I think with the resources that we have, freely available to your friends, they can be much more effective at fundraising than maybe they've been in the past. And it's so gratifying, it's so rewarding. So make sure that they check into those, um, all the toolkits and resources we have so they can do even a better job of it to help us, you know, get through these tough times. And I will say, philosophically, I, I don't encourage friends to sort of raise money for operations. I think it's very important that the, our funders understand that we 
are so beloved in our communities that people are willing to raise money to put icing on the cake, even if that cake is becoming a cupcake now. Um, but they are not going to pay for salaries, and they're not going to pay for the heat, and they're not going to pay for standard collections and that sort of thing, that they will add to what's not normally in the budget. Because I worry sometimes that if we're um, extremely successful at fundraising, um, that we let the funders off the hook. And as one of my friends said recently, as soon as the uh, as soon as the police department has a bake sale, I'll start you know funding operations. So <laughs> well, we. We have to make sure that, um, and friends are so good at this, friends are so good at this, making sure that our funders understand that we are a core service, that we are essential to our communities. And even though we're not putting out fires today, we, by our work um, in the continuum of literacy from, uh, from infancy to death, that we are creating more stronger citizens. We are helping kids get through school successfully. We are helping children enter kindergarten uh, ready to learn. And so we are putting out an even bigger fire longer term and saving a lot of money because um, as my police chief in Norfolk said when I got a big increase in my salary through the advocacy efforts of friends and trustees, um, he said, well, and he therefore didn't get quite as much of an increase as he wanted and he said, well you can pay her now or you can pay me later and I'm a hell of a lot more expensive. <laughs> and I don't think <laughs> And I don't think truer words were ever spoken. So that's the kind of thing that friends really can say with quite a bit of authority. And of course librarians too, and the partnership to me is librarians, friends, and trustees working together because librarians can do the math. Librarians have the statistics. They know what difference has been made. They know what the cost of um, of education is versus the cost of libraries. They know what the cost of uh, dropping out is when kids don't get that support that they need for the school curriculum. They know what the cost is of kids entering kindergarten without any kind of book rich environment. So you can provide the facts and the background. The friends can give voice to it and can tell stories and can show funders that they are not interested, they're not self-interested except in that they want a community that works and a community that's healthy and you cannot have a healthy community without a healthy library. So they're the great ones to do that and that's why it's so important that you work with all TAF and you work with your friends and trustees and engage them with the resources that we have because I think it's going to make um, a difference down the road. I really do. I worry a lot about what's going to happen to libraries if the citizens who love them and use them are not engaged and encouraged to stand up for them. And so that's what ALTAF's all about, but it really only can happen with you at the local level. So let's see what the next slide is. Um, one of the great things, I just put this up if you're not familiar with it, and I'm sure you all are, but maybe you've forgotten about it and need to go back. One of the great things about being part of ALA now, I think, is that I'm much more in the know and engaged myself with other units of ALA and have a lot better access and, and not that I didn't always, but it's more in my face now, I guess. I can see it all the time. The resources that ALA has for all of you out there, friends, trustees, and librarians, and this is just one piece, The Small But Powerful Guide to Winning Big Support for Your Rural Library. I don't know if you've seen it. Have you all seen it? I guess I can't um, have you raise your hands. Maybe I can. But anyway, if you have it, you must write down this uh, web address and go look at it because it is a very great toolkit on how to um, improve advocacy at the rural, for rural and small libraries. And I know that um, pretty much wraps up most of Nebraska's libraries. Um, so do you, I, just an aside, I hope you all know I'm from Nebraska. <laughs> it's my big bragging point. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, went, I grew up in Nebraska, graduated from high school at Hastings High, and whenever people, and even though it's been, oh my gosh, 40 years or oh, near 40 years since I lived there, um, I still tell people when they ask me where I'm from, I still say I'm from Nebraska. So, you know, it does get into your heart 
and um, that's one of the reasons I love to be invited to talk to you all either in person or online like this. It, it, it's like coming home again. So anyway, um, that, that's just to tell you I know that most of you have role in small libraries and this toolkit is wonderful. There are a lot of other just general ALA resources and I encourage you as librarians to sort of, um, you know, browse around their website from time to time. Another great resource is um, www.ilovelibraries.org um, and this is another um, attempt from ALA to capture citizen supporters of libraries. Um, so it's got a lot of really interesting things. And then also um, American Libraries, a magazine, is coming out with an online magazine that's going to be geared to helping librarians market their collections. So it's going to be all about tying in current events with uh, current book titles that probably a lot of you will have on your shelves and, and uh, book talks and book uh, reviews and all sorts of fun things that, that really have a user endpoint. You know, how do you market your collection to the user. So that's something else that you can look for out there that's going, it's not published yet, but keep an eye out for that. And that's one of the things that Altap is going to start doing is trying to, via our listserv, because right now that is our best way, um, and our newsletter, but, but via the listserv as well, to get the um, word out to all of you when these wonderful new uh, toolkits, programs, projects, websites come up so that you can count on us to be watching for you in case you miss something. Hopefully we'll pick it out and push it out to you. Pick it up and push it out to you. So um, we're real excited about moving forward. We're, we think that we're getting better all the time because we're building, building, building on that library of materials. And um, we so welcome all of you to send in your stories to us. Um, I know that if you've been reading the news update in the voice, you're often seeing stories that come from Nebraska because so many of you are very good about sending in um, what you've been up to and what made a difference in your community. And the beauty of that is, well, first of all, you get some national recognition, but more importantly, um, you're putting out ideas out there that could be replicated in Alabama or Washington or some other place that help them. So, you know, together we can make libraries um, really strong nationwide, but it takes everybody contributing. So I hope that you will continue to do that uh, with us and we'll continue to contribute back to you. Sally, I just wanted to mention for everyone who's um, out there frantically trying to write down this URL and others, is that we will have a list on our delicious account, the Commission's delicious account, a list of all these URLs. So you won't have to write them all down. Um, you can go to them through that. That's great. And I think you said that you were going to archive this uh, webinar as well, right? Absolutely, yes. So, so that that's everybody great. can watch it again. Wonderful. And I know you all can't wait to see the rerun. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> or those of us who didn't get to watch. <laughs> right, right. Okay, well, I think if we get pulled the last slide, I think it's the last slide. Yes, so I gave you the felusa.org, which is where you still go in with, um, okay, here's a quiz for you all. Uh, do you remember your username and, law and password? <laughs> Anybody? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Okay, well, I'm going to give it to you because you obviously cannot get to all this fabulous material unless you have it. And I'm told that what will work for you until the renewal time is username spelling, S-P-E-L-L-I-N-G, and password B, B-E-E, -E, spelling B. We try Love to make it. it. Cool. Yeah. Love it. We That's don't one have of our the... big fundraisers at oh, the uh, Lincoln City Libraries Foundation. We have a spelling bee for, for our Nebraska Literary Heritage Association. I love spelling bees. I think they are just awesome. So great. That's a good way for you to all remember it. Um, you can always call us. There's our toll-free number. You can always call us and ask for your, um, your 
username and password. You can call us with any kind of question like, you know, my trustee is coming into the library every day and, you know, correcting the way our circulation staff is working. What do I do? You can do, you can call us about anything and we'll give you our two cents worth. And actually it's sort of an educated two cents worth because of all the years that we have been working and listening to that listserv that's so um, brilliant and also working with groups. We kind of have gotten to know what really works and what doesn't and we certainly have an organizational or maybe institutional position on certain things like how much money should a friends group give every year to their library and um, where is the role between friends and libraries and the role between libraries, where are the lines with the trustees, that kind of thing. So feel free to call anytime. We're here for that. Um, we love doing it. And I would like at this point to um, open the floor for any kind of questions. Yes, feel free to go ahead and either type your question into the text box or raise your hand and I'll unmute your microphone so you can go ahead and ask it over your microphone. Well, while people are thinking of their question, I have one for you, Sally. Uh, and you mentioned this early on that uh, many people are not in a position to or able to attend the uh, conferences, the American Library Association midwinter meeting or the annual conference, but may they may have uh, sometime in the future a, a chance to do that. Um, Altav uh, will be offering some excellent uh, programs during the conferences. Uh, what's, what do you have lined up for uh, uh, the uh, annual conference that will come up in late June in Washington in 2010? Well, thanks for that. We do have some wonderful programs. And, you know, ALA meets in some really very wonderful cities across America, Washington, D.C. being the one that Rod is referring to. So, you know, if you have an opportunity to sort of combine a vacation with an ALA um, event, that is a great um, idea, I think, for you because um, it, ALTAF offers quite a number of wonderful programs for friends and for trustees. Coming up um, at the conference in D.C., we have our traditional annual nuts and bolts for friends and trustees. So if your friends or trustees are coming, um, it's a great roundtable discussion on best practices, and we always bring in a speaker to talk about fundraising or membership building or um, advocacy or any of a number of issues that are of particular interest to friends and trustees. So that's that's going with every single conference. You can count on that. And that's a uh, program that we have now um, created a day-long program. It's going to be off the ALA campus, hopefully every time in the central library of the city where we visit, um, so that you don't have to even register for the conference to attend that. We also have some really great author programs every single annual conference and um, this we have an author tea it's a ticketed event and it's always four to five best-selling authors um, and I'm trying off the top of my head to remember who our headliner is this time it's Sharon McCrum you all I know are familiar with her and we always get really great authors for this we've had Joyce Carol Oates we've had Frank Delaney we've had um, gosh uh, Eileen Gooch, um, Mary Kay Andrews, I'm trying to think of them off the top of my head, but always wonderful, wonderful authors, Nikki Giovanni. Um, so we have that. The new thing that we've started doing about now, it's going to be in its third year at annual, is a program called The Laughs on Us. It is headlined by uh, Paula Poundstone. She is all Taft's national spokesperson. And by the way, if you have not seen her PSAs for Friends of the Libraries, you need to go to www.falusa.org um, and find and click on the Paula Poundstone picture. She has downloadable 30 second and 15 second um, uh, PSAs on why you should join the Friends. And those are available for you to put on your own library's website, and they are so funny. They are really great. So 
that's another thing that Altaf does for you. So please go there and get that PSA. Anyway, she comes and does the laughs on us, and then we have about four or five other comic writers who get up, and it's like nightclub style. They get up and they just do a, like a 10-minute reading or a 10-minute shtick, and it is hilarious. And we serve wine and cheese plates and soft drinks, and it's just a great, great evening. Then we have about four or five um, author panels that are free. Um, that um, uh, we always have a first author, first book panel. And I think our biggest uh, prize on that was that we had Jane, uh, James Grogan, uh, Marley and me, on that panel before anybody knew who he was. So now we're all sitting around with these first edition signed copies of Marley and me. I, you know, I can retire soon, I think. Um, the, the other panel discussion we're going to have in D.C. is that we're having um, a diversity panel called Authors Come in All Colors. We are having, of course, since we're in D.C., we're having a political and policy issues panel um, of writers who are talking about our current uh, state of affairs in America. And um, we're having a, isn't it romantic, um, a genre panel on romances. So lots of good things at ALA. Um, for you to attend. And this is very typical of what we have every single annual conference. So if you get a chance to be in, um, in the same city where ALA is happening, it's really worth your while and it's worth your friends and trustees' while to come. Trustees always have three or four programs on best practices for trustees as well. So always something really good. Thanks for that question, Rod. Okay, we have a couple of questions that people have typed in while you're answering that one. Um, we have a question from a trustee at the Omaha Public Library System who says, please tell me more about the library trustee certification program. Oh, great. Well, we're going to start in the fall. We're going to have about six uh, classes and uh, courses. They're going to be offered online. They will be, uh, there will be a modest charge for them, very modest for all TAF members. So I, you are an all TAF member since you live in Nebraska. All Nebraska trustees, friends, and librarians are. Um, we are going to discuss um, the issues of uh, planning and intellectual freedom and effective board, ma board meetings and board management. We're going to talk about director evaluation, um, director recruitment and evaluation. We're going to, and that, by the way, I got the earlier question, if we're an advisory board, are, are there materials for us? And even though um, if you are a city department and you're only an advice only, in quotes, if you're an advisory board, you still normally have or should have some role to play in um, recruiting and evaluating the director. So if you don't, I think that's something that you should lobby for because it's really important, I think, as citizen representatives to have a say in who is uh, managing this precious resource and you should be able to have input into that evaluation process. And that's, that's pretty typical. So if you don't have it, um, you know, you should. And so we're going to go through all those issues, we're even um, issues of effective meetings and even issues of how can you be a more effective advocate for your libraries and your library's budget. So it will be six to eight courses over the course of probably, I imagine, six months. And there will be criteria. We're still working this up, but there's going to be criteria um, to establish recognition for um, boards of trustees who've gone through the process. And we, do, we don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet, but there will be some kind of re national recognition for trustees who are, have gone through the um, curriculum and are, quote, certified, unquote, as um, all TAF recognized uh, trustees. I'll just add into that, uh, Nebraska does have a Public Library Board certification program, so this should be a very nice match to uh, uh, the uh, national uh, program for trustee certification. That's right. That's exactly right. Okay, we have another question that came in. What should we be doing with the multiple copies of the newsletter that our library receives? Well, I think that you should spread them around. Um, I, I think you're receiving three, is that correct? I believe so. Okay. Our 
our idea is that one would go to the board president and maybe be circulated there. By the way, you can also get copies um, online as members of Altaf. So um, one hard copy to the president, one to the librarian, and one to the friend's president with the um, knowledge that you can go online to that ala.org slash altaf, um, those who don't receive the hard copy and still get copies online. Um, we think it's really important for all of you, all three, uh, uh, what do you call them, the legs of that stool, to be seeing what's going on in the world. We are also in, in our newsletter, by the way, we're trying to isolate and identify and push out to you national issues that are going to have some kind of impact on you at the local level so that you can see them coming. Because a lot of times, um, for example, remember when the lead for uh, children's materials, children's toys and everything came out and it looked for a minute that library collections, uh, children's collections would all have to be tested, which of course would be not only impossible, but impossibly expensive. Um, but those kinds of things really do and could have impact on you at the local level. So we're going to try to stay on top of that for you. So everybody should be looking at The Voice. Okay, are there any other questions? Sally, what about friends groups for uh, schools and colleges? We do have a pretty good membership for academic college um, friends because academic libraries have been really ahead of the curve on developing some kind of support group for their library, fundraising support group primarily. Um, and most colleges and very often college libraries have a development officer. So they also work with the Friends of the Academic Library and we do offer particular materials to academic libraries. The book Even More Great Ideas is at least 30 percent academic ideas. So many of those are transferable back and forth. So um, you know what a f academic friends group does and what a public library friends group does very often are very similar like author programs or book signings that sort of thing. School libraries I think is the toughest nut we've got to crack and as you all know who are listening to this every one of you knows that school libraries are in great danger across the country. They are being zeroed out even before any kind of sports team before even you know even sometimes art classes or other things, library media centers are being either closed at worst um, and or having their media specialist eliminated and put in a paraprofessional or some kind of clerk at best. So it's a real tough situation out there and I've been a firm believer for a long time that if they had friends groups none of this would happen. As a parent I know that oftentimes libraries close without you even knowing it until your kid happens to say, well we don't have a library anymore and you didn't even know about it because if you had known you would have raised holy hell, excuse my language, but you know no parent is going to let their media center close. So they're done sort of in the dark of the night. And friends, the beauty of friends is that they don't have to, they can relieve the librarian of getting in trouble, especially those of you who are direct reports to your city manager or your council. You know, you can't go out there and wave a red flag and say, oh no, you don't cut me, but your friends can. And in schools, the hierarchy is even more intense than in cities, really. There are librarians who've told me in schools that they don't want to start a friends group because their principal won't let them. Um, and the principal doesn't want friends because the principal knows full well that the friends are the ones that are going to go out there and say, no, you're not going to close us. Um, so my idea with school library um, librarians is that they start a volunteer group of parents to shelve books, to help read stories, you know, in other words, something benign enough that they can let the, that group in the door and then keep that group informed as if they were a friends group so that they, though that group, call them something else, but so that that group can get the word out when there is a threat to the school media center. I went to the American Association of uh, School Libraries conference last time and our booth was absolutely swamped and we got absolutely not one single membership out of it. And I don't care about the membership, but it tells me that even though they're interested, school librarians are not as a large group moving forward to save their media centers. And I think it's a real pity. 
I really do. I hold school media libraries, school media specialists um, responsible for a lot of this as well. I just think they've done a very poor job of nurturing um, a group that can help get the word out about their library. Uh, ironically, they do it because they don't want to get in trouble and then they end up fired. <laughs> so I, mean, I don't get it, but that's where school libraries are right now. We only have a couple school library friends groups with our membership right now. Sally, just to kind of point, uh, bring back something you talked about earlier, right now the best place for people to go is the Felusa uh, website, www.felusa.org, correct? Yes. Um, the ala.org, ALTAP won't allow them access to the resources they can get to with their password and username yet. That, that's, that's right. That's correct. Okay. At this time, that's correct. Just checking. Thanks, Sally. Thank you. I'm glad you brought that up. We do have another question that was typed in. Um, could you talk about the statewide membership for all Nebraska public libraries and how all our public libraries could take advantage of that free membership? Well, that's exactly um, pretty much what we've been talking about, and that is, I think, a really wonderful thing, a wonderful gift from your state library to have purchased memberships for all libraries in the state of Nebraska, and that membership includes membership for your trustees, it includes membership for the library uh, staff, and it includes membership for the friends, and um, all the materials that we've been talking about today are available to you free or those discounts are also available to you as members. When we launched the trustee certification program, your, every single board of trustees in the state of Nebraska is going to be eligible to attend at a very, very low price as members. Um, so all of the things that we've been talking about today, and I will tell you again, um, are available to you using the username spelling and the password B and going to www.felusa.org and right on the front page you'll see a member login. And once you log in, all of the materials we've been talking about today will be available to all of you in your library community. We're, and, and honestly, we, we're perfectly happy for you to post that on your website if you want um, your citizens to also be able to go in and look it might be a good recruiting um, there might be some good recruiting materials in there for new members to come into the friends uh, we just want everything that we have to be freely and fully available to your library community great well we have about five minutes left before the end of the session. Are there any last minute questions out there? Rod and Mary Jo, do you have any final thoughts? We certainly appreciate Sally being here. Well, thank you. It's always delightful to be there. Um, I was telling Rod before this program started that I was in Nebraska. I was at Mahoney State Park two weekends ago with a fa uh, having a family reunion, and we had a wonderful time. And as if you recall, that was a gorgeous weekend. It was uh, beautifully sunny in about mid-60s. It couldn't have been more perfect. Oh, Sally, that was a beautiful weekend. I do remember it. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention, if I could, that I have been blogging this session on the Encompass blog. So I invite everyone who's listening uh, to go on to the Nebraska Library Commission website, click the, the blog icon at the bottom of the page, and uh, please share your comments about how you think you might be able to use these resources with your library trustees, advocates, friends, foundations, all your library supporters, and um, also other things that you think might be useful for uh, the Library Commission to consider supporting you and your uh, library supporters. We do have one more question coming in. What one thing should a new executive director do regarding the library support groups? I think the, the first thing I would do as a new executive director is I would have a get-together. And I would have like maybe a potluck dinner or wine and cheese event or something like that for the friends and the trustees and the library staff to all come together and maybe um, a little time for talking at the microphone about where the library is going, what the environment for the library looks like, are you facing cuts, are, um, are you 
really excited because a planning process is coming up, whatever's on your agenda, and let them know what's on the horizon and let them know how they can help. But I think by bringing them all together, you will set in a, in a really nice and formal and fun um, atmosphere, you will set the agenda that you all work together and the library's future health depends on all of you working together. Um, I think that would be the first step I would take. Hey, we also have our first raised hand of the session, so Barbara, I'm going to go ahead and unmute your microphone. And you should be able to go ahead and ask your question now. I hope. <laughs> Barbara, can you hear us? Okay, it seems like maybe that's not quite working the way it should. Um, Barbara, if you have a question, would you mind going ahead and typing it into the box marked questions? We're having a little technical difficulty here. So, um, I'm not seeing the question coming in from Barbara, but we do have our contact information and Sally contact yeah, information. Yeah, Barbara. So. Feel free to call Barbara. Um, we're I'm here all day, every day. So yeah. give me a call. I'd love to talk to you. Let's see. Oh, I. Oh, Barbara was just letting us know who attended the session with her. So I see that in the text box, and I will mark that down. Thank you very much, Barbara. That's always good to know, because then we get an accurate count of how many people actually attended. Okay, well, if there are no more questions, then I'd like to once again thank Sally Reed for joining us, and thank you all for attending, and please come back and join us in the future for more Encompass Live. Thanks, Sally. Thank you, everyone. And thank you all for joining us this morning. Thank you. Bye-bye. So long, Sally. Bye now.